How's it going everyone? My name is Aiden and welcome to this video. So today this is a bit of a different kind of video because I had to adapt to my situation. Now originally I was recording my Borderlands 3 playthrough and at this point I've been playing for around an hour and a half and I got around to killing the boss and then when I came back this afternoon to edit the video my commentary was corrupted and I sounded like some kind of shit movie villain. It was like and all this rubbish right and I couldn't fix it for the life of me you know I, I was like ah, oh, this is two hours pretty much wasted but then I thought do you know what I was actually very proud with the outcome of the end of the video which was me managing to solo the Kagawa ball now as someone who has never played previous Borderlands I actually have very limited knowledge in just Borderlands overall I've only played the last couple of days and managing to defeat this boss felt like quite an achievement and I did look up to see on YouTube if anyone had been you know having trouble with this boss and I only saw a few completions of it and most of them were at a decent level you know they were around the same level as this boss I did see one guy who was level 14 as well and funnily enough he had the same weapon as I do so <laughs> this is like a technique almost in itself that I just picked up unnaturally so what happened was, at this point in the game, I've been playing for an hour and a half on this one mission, and we got around to this big boy boss fight. Now, I did have a teammate who attempted this boss with me two times, but we got knocked, like, after we took down his yellow health, and then my teammate just rage quit and left me. So at this point, I was like, right, I'm in a rush anyway. I've got to go do some errands, and I can't just leave this mission at the boss fight because I, I don't know whether I would load in at the boss fight or have to redo the whole mission. And I didn't want to take my chances, as I had said, I'd already spent an hour and a half getting to, to this point. And if you're thinking, why did it take me so long? I originally had an AFK player in a mission, because I was searching for a campaign mission. And I ran it for about 40-50 minutes, and then my teammate came back and kicked me. And I was like, holy shit, I've been kicked, did I just waste 50 minutes? I reloaded up the mission, and luckily my checkpoint was the same, so I decided to continue from there solo. And my lobby was open, I was the host, so I was open to let anyone join. And uh, basically, one person joined and ended up leaving anyway, so I, I basically soloed this whole mission. But enough of me ranting about how long it took me to get to the boss fight and how I actually went about it. Now, one of the things I was mainly worried about was the ammunition, because I was like, holy shit, this guy has a ton of health. Like, a ton. Now, I was like, hmm, I've got my unlimited racks. And I did believe it would get to a point where I would just be sending my racks and maybe my beast is going to do some extra damage. Now, they definitely played a big role because, you know, if you add the amount of times I threw flax and how much damage my dog got off by themselves, it probably equated to quite a large percentage, I'd imagine, around 30%. I literally plucked that percentage out of thin air so, you know, don't go breaking my legs over it. So a big thing about this boss is it has a lot of AoE attacks. So its attacks do da like area damage. You have to be very careful where you are and how much splash you take, especially when those shots are right next to you. They do a large amount of damage. So the way I went around countering this was by spending all my uh, time at the top of the arena behind these massive battery powered things where I could just dip out and still shoot him. I still had a nice shot on them and I always jump up and shoot my flax over at this like block thing and this block just absorbed most of the hits. And then as soon as he rotate to my side, I rotate to the other block and it was a rinse and repeat from here. All you need to do is get used to this little rotation here. Whenever he starts flying over to you, you rotate to the next one. And you'll start finding these little different points behind these blocks where you can manage to get off as many shots as you can. And obviously you've got to be careful that the AoE stuff that he shoots doesn't splash on you. But obviously that is like the big part of this. All you've got to do is have the blocks soak up the attacks and then you just creep out and get your shots off as quickly as possible and then dip in between. So one of the things I tried staying focused on was obviously my shield. Now, because my shield could literally drop very, very quickly, as soon as it went down to like even 200 and whatever here, I made sure that I didn't take any more damage or I tried my best not to until I was fully gen. Basically, I wanted to be on full shield and full health 100% of the time. As soon as I took one piece of damage, I went straight to cover and focused on getting my health back so that I could then, you know, rinse and repeat. Pretty much as easy as that. 
So there are a couple of different phases. Obviously, there are three phases overall for this boss. Now, the third phase, this was the first time I come up against it. And basically, he's just this small orb and he does a lot more moving. So you have to be pretty aware of where you're jumping and make sure you're not getting blocked wherever you're going. Because what happened to me a couple times was I was jumping backwards and I wasn't actually going where I wanted to. I was getting blocked by something. And then <laughs> he started piling on all this damage and I was freaking out. I was like, no, there's no way I can die right now. I'm so... I'm so deep in, like, this would be so horrible if I was to, like, fail here. So the technique to beating this boss, pretty much I would just say, is sticking up to the top of the arena and bouncing between these two big blocks. Now, obviously, this massive white thing in front of you on the screen now is what I'm referring to as the block. You just rotate between both of them, and that is pretty much the the way that I done it to beat this boss, and it worked like a charm, so I recommend to anyone. Now, if there are anyone, if there's anyone that's having trouble with this boss, but understands different elements of Borderlands, such as the elements to do damage to this boss. Now, I was using a shock weapon. I believe that the shock weapon was doing more damage to the shield. Is that right? <laughs> You've come on this video to try and get help with how to kill this boss, and I'm asking you now how to get better at Borderlands because I'm having a lot of fun with Borderlands, and I'm definitely going to be working on getting myself end game, especially for the raids. I mean. Hot Jesus, that stuff looks hot. Did I say hot Jesus, that stuff looks hot? <laughs> but basically, I'm going to obviously try and learn as much as possible. And I read through all my comments. So if there's anyone out there that are playing Borderlands and they've got some advice for me, you know, even just from this gameplay, you could be like, oh, okay, actually, you could have done this differently. You could have done that. But I believe this, the way this video went down or the way this boss fight went down is based off my Destiny gameplay in the past. So obviously Destiny I feel is very similar to this like game in general when it comes to the boss fights. I mean this boss literally reminds me of the Devil's Lair. There's just this massive eyeball boss which is exactly the same thing. But here we go. We, crap, we, we killed him man. We got all our loot. We grabbed all our money. There was nothing too special from this loot. So I was like, oh, okay. I mean, it's pretty standard though because it's just a missionary boss. It's not like a raid boss or anything. So there was no chance of, uh, I don't know if there was a chance of like some crazy weapon, but I didn't receive one anyway. So, all right. So as I was running about, I also received the reward for completing this mission, which was, as we can see, 7,250 XP, $1,647, and also a level 229 epic pistol. So some decent loot, um, obviously you know you can get better weapons and such just from the store and from enemy drops in general. The money wasn't too bad but you know don't go wasting it all on slots. But anyway ladies and gents I hope this video helped you, I mean uh, I'm no Borderlands pro but I felt like this technique was, it, it's going to help people if they are having trouble with that boss especially if you can't find any teammates so if it does, you know, and it did help, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Hit that notifications bell next to the subscribe button if you haven't already. Take care, and I will see you in the next one. Adios.